okay in this video we are going to see how to create multiple structs and arrays inside of structs okay so we're going to put it all together it's one step ahead of what you've seen so far so we have multiple files which you know and in this case i'm going to show you an example from xylab and for that example, we have a student struct, student.h and student.cpp, a classroom student struct, which has three data members, first name of the student, last name of the student, and the GPA. That's one of the structs. The other struct is course.h and course.cpp represents a course struct, which has two data members, an array of students, this student. So an array of this struct inside of this struct and the number of students for that list. So a list and its size, right? You know all of these things from before. We are just going to model it a little differently. So we've seen a list, we've seen a size, you've seen a list of integers, you've seen a list of struct items in 161B. We're gonna pick up from there. We have a list of students and the size inside of this struct and main is just a client that is going to essentially test this program okay so that is kind of what we're going to see here and what we are going to do is we're going to work on this optional xylab where we are given most of the functions the student with highest gpa and our goal is to use these structs that are given to us we have a single student struct and then using that we're going to create a list of students inside of this struct and a size that goes with it so a list of students and the size says how many students are in that there in that list, right? The list can have a capacity, which is a maximum number of students it can have, and then the number of elements that number of students that are actually there in that list. And we're gonna find the student with the highest GPA. That's our goal. So I'm gonna show you a pictorial representation of all the stuff that we are talking about. Okay. So here is the single student struct. Okay. It is a struct data type. It has first name, last name, and GPA. So when I create a variable called student of this struct, I put this little star to show that this is a variable, not a data type. This here is a data type. So this little star says this is a variable. Student1 is a variable of this data type. Student, student1. Student, student two, student two is another variable. So they each have their own first name, last name, GPA. The student has their own first name, last name, GPA. If we create individual students, right? Okay, now to the next step. Here is this other data type, which is the course struct. The course struct, notice down here, its data members are two things. A roster, a list, which is an array called roster of this type student. So instead of individual students, we are creating a list of students and int num students is the same as your int count that you have had before. If you had a list of items and count is the number of items in that list. So we have a list of students and num students is the number of students in this list. The capacity is 20. That's different, right? That's how many it can hold maximum. This number of students is how many there are currently. Maybe there are only four students, five students. That is what num students is. So this is a pictorial representation of this whole data type, an array that can hold multiple students, 20 students to be precise. And number of students is just an int variable that holds the count of the number of students. And of course, each student will have their own first name, last name, GP, and so on and so forth. This is not a variable, it is a data type. If I created a variable of this whole object, it's gonna look like this. Notice here, course, a course, I called it a course. So when I create a course, a course is an object like this. It comes with its own list and the number of students, which is what we told it. It comes with a list of students of 20 students and a variable called number of students to hold the count of the students. And initially notice a course dot num students is zero because there's nobody in the list. So it's a variable and these, the, again, the little stars to show you that this whole thing is a variable, right? And each one of these is a variable as well that belongs to this variable. This is all part of it, right? Data member. Okay, a course dot num students is zero. Of course, there's, we don't initialize the array. And this is just an example to show if I wanted to put a value in there, a course dot 
roster. Roster is the array. So the square bracket goes with the roster. Num students is again, it is zero. We use the num students as our subscript. So this is going into position zero dot GPA. This first student's GPA is going to be 3.5. And the first student's first name, I put in both my names, but the first name probably should just be GD. And then I can do the same thing. I would do string copy because these three variables that I created are char arrays. I mean, the two are char arrays and the GPA is a double. Okay, so the GPA gets assigned with an assignment operator. The two char arrays gets copied. So the key to note is a course is an object, is a whole struct object as we call it, dot roster, which is the array that belongs to that object, square bracket, because the roster is an array, num students dot first name and I string copy. So most of this work has already been done in the program. Our job is to go through this existing list, which has already been created, students have been added, and I'm gonna show you some of those functions. Our job is to go through this list and find the student with the highest GPA. So if you think about it, and if you were to write an algorithm for this, right, you know how to find the maximum. You have an GPA is double, so you have a double variable called max GPA, set it to the first student, that's what that is, I didn't have space right there first student's gpa right then you go through a for loop so if you were to write this you would go through a for loop and this is why writing algorithms are very important so before you start coding you actually want to do this so you go through a for loop you know i equals zero and i less than you have this number of students tells you how many students there are and that's why we have that so it's not just num students it would be a course here's the important part a course dot num students because if you simply just say num students num students doesn't hang by itself num students is part of a course and this is where most of the students make mistake is you just say i less than num students no num students doesn't hang by itself num students is part of a course right so in this for loop what are we going to do this max gpa has been set to the first student's gpa so you can start i at zero or at one if you want to because we've already taken the first students and set it to max gpa so you would say then if max gpa is less than sorry that should be max gpa max gpa is less than um a course roster no a course dot roster is the name of the array score bracket i dot now here is where we have to get the gpa okay so we have a function that will return the gpa for us so let's take a look at the lab real quick to see all the different functions there are. So here's what we were talking about. Let's start with the student.h file. So this is the optional lab. Student.h file has the char array first name, char array last name, and the GPA, right? And there's an init student. And here we take this, remember you've done pointers. We receive an array into a pointer. It works the same way as putting a square bracket syntax. Okay, we're gonna see how to, the code is already written. We're just going to see how it is done. Init student simply creates a student and sets the first name, last name, and GPA to that value. Get last name will return the last name. Again, pointer goes in and it comes back filled. Okay. Um, get GPA returns a student. Uh, you send a student and you get the GPA for that student. This is our function. So if I send a student, I will get a GPA back. So perhaps what we should do is we should have a temporary variable here in our algorithm outside the for loop. We already have a max GPA. Let's have one called temp GPA, make it a double. And what you could do in here is instead of trying to put all the code in there, if it makes it easier for you to understand, you do temp GPA equals a course dot rosters, you know, score bracket I dot and then you would call the get GPA function because that's what is here. If you go back here, um, get GPA returns a double. And if you pass a student to it, right? Uh, so we wouldn't use the dot. Instead, we would just call get GPA and send the student to it. So let's go back to our whiteboard. So you would simply say get GPA and you pass this student to it. 
and this is one student right a course dot roster of i this is one student so our get gpa function takes a student and returns that student's gpa so if you go take a look at student.cpp and if you look at the get gpa function it returns the student's gpa that's what that's doing and so that's what we want and that comes into tech gpa and then here it's easier you can just come here and say if max gpa is less than temp gpa then you know what the deal is then max gpa becomes temp gpa because it is not the maximum anymore right temp gpa and then you go through the whole for loop and you do that every time you go to the next element you get that student's gpa into temp gpa and you do the comparison and if uh, max gpa is less than that then max gpa will become or you can do the other way around if temp gpa is greater than max gpa in you know the logic is the same and once you do that let's see what is required of us so that is the function that we essentially need to write okay and the function we need to write now let's go back and take a look at this stuff here um so so starting with student.h look at init student receives first last pointers come in and you're just doing string copy from this which is nothing but a pointer which holds the address of the array that is going to come in and i'm going to show you where init student is going to get called we will essentially pass an array here you're looking at that array you're copying from that array to this student that we are creating a local variable a single object this is the same as our student one we are creating it we are filling all of this stuff from the parameters coming in so student string copy student dot first name first gets copied in there last gets copied in here gpa gets copied in here this is anytime you want to init a student we may not use any of these functions i'm just explaining to you what each function does get last name does the same thing right a char array pointer comes in this is by reference it's then the pointer doesn't come in by reference but the pointer holds the address so we are looking at the array originally you copy from students last name to this char array and it'll go back filled okay and we're going to take a look in a minute to see where all these functions are called so let's go to course.h and here is where notice this array is getting created student array with the number of students okay and this has a few functions and this is the function that we need to write find student highest gpa takes this course object so my a course this a course is the same as this course okay and we're going to return as the student with the highest gpa which means i have to create a local student variable in there in that function to return it which we will do okay and so if you go take a look at course.cpp notice in here init course creates a local variable it sets the num students to zero so this this course is just like our a course it's going to have an array and the number of students and you're going to return that Okay, it's all been done for us. We don't have to do any of that. Here is where we need to just go through and create our local student called top student. Okay, and course dot roster of zero. So you set this top student to the first student in the list. Okay, and then if get GPA of so we are starting the loop at zero you don't have to you can start at one and it'll still be fine if get gpa you send the first student which is exactly what we did here course a course dot roster of i to get gpa and they are doing it all in one shot you can put it in a temp gpa variable if that is greater than get gpa of top student which is this student again they have done it all in one shot you could very well come here or maybe i wrote this code you could come here and you could simply say, you know, max GPA equals get GPA of top student. That'll do the same thing. Okay. So we have top student. We have set it to the first student. We pass that. We get GPA. So that way in here, and then you can do the same here. You can have a temp GPA, right? You could create, this has to be a double. This one like it. And you could come here and have a double temp GPA equals zero. And you could come here and say temp GPA equals 
get GPA and you're going to pass this student, whoever the ith student. And then you would, you would simply come here and the code that we wrote was the other way around. We said if max GPA is, uh, get rid of that, is less than temp GPA, right? Then top student equals course.rostrify. That should, should still work okay. We are just comparing the two GPAs and then when we are done, we are returning top student, okay? So then if you go into submit mode and if you try and submit it for grading, let's see if we get any errors with it. So this will pretty much return, um, oh, I'm missing a parenthesis. Let's see, get GPA right here. Okay, so this will return top student and we are printing top student in main. So we get a whole bunch of errors. Let's see, double max GPA equals R GPA. Get GPA must be capital PA. What else did we, what else did I do that? Temp GPA equals, that part is okay. Let's try one more time. And we print it wherever we call it. So it says get GPA was not declared in this scope. Oh, maybe it's capital get GPA. Okay, well, let's, uh, Try it one more time. I think everywhere else we have done it right. Okay, so there we go. You get top student is Sonia King. So where is this function getting called? Again, let's go take a look at main.cpp to see how this is done. This will help you with your lab that I'm going to show you in a minute because this is exactly what we use in um, in the other lab. So init course creates that course that is in take a look at course.cpp course object gets created with number of students being set to zero and the array has nothing in it. Then we create these local four students, right? In its student, remember, is in student.cpp. In its student takes, this is what we looked at. It takes a first name, last name, and GPA, which is what we are sending from there. So the first name is essentially that static literal string, you know, Henry, when, and the GPA that's associated with it. It comes here and it creates the student and it returns it. So that's what init student is doing. So if you go back to main.cpp, here's my init student. So we get create four students. Then we send these four students, each one to course add student. So there's a function in course.cpp called add student. This will really benefit you if you go through some of these things to understand what's going on with your code. So if you go to add student here, notice it receives that big course, which is my A course, right? And it receives one student and we are essentially adding it to the list. That's what it's doing, okay? So it's getting this one student at a time and course.num students is the number of students in the course, which is my subscript. So course.roster, course.number of students. So the subscript is zero first, which is also the number of students. Then you increment it and you've done all of these things before. Remember, you've done this all before. We are just putting it all together inside of another struct. That's all it is. So this course is one whole object. It has the array and then it also has a number of students. So these two don't stand by themselves. It's always course.number of students or course.roster, which is the same as a course in mind. Okay. So it takes each one and it essentially copies from the single student coming in, their last name gets copied into the course array student. And so what we're doing is we are taking values from each one of these and copying it into the first one. Then the next student comes in, then you copy into the next one. Then the next student comes in, then you copy in. So we have four or five students that gets copied, right? And then you return this whole object. This whole object gets returned and objects can be returned as a whole. Remember, it's not an array, this whole thing is an object that gets returned, which is what we're doing here. It gets filled and it gets returned. So when you go to main, the whole thing comes back with everything filled and we are taking that and sending it to the fine student highest GPA and that is returning one student that goes in here. So the lab that you're required to do has all of this stuff done. It's very simple. You just have to understand how this whole thing is done. You have to write one line of code and it simply says, how do you figure out, you know, write a function, complete course.cpp by implementing the course size function, which returns the total number of students in the course. So you, what you're doing is you're receiving a whole object like this, and your job is to simply return the number of students in that object. 
So I think you can figure out how to do that.